Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I stumbled upon something on Pinterest and I've been meaning to actually talk about this thing, so let's do it. to talk about a little post I saw on Pinterest that said the seven hard truths about love and right after I went through all of them I realized they're actually true based on my experience and life let me share the first hard truth is that people will make time for what they want it's true if you are a priority in someone's life you will know okay now it doesn't mean that they drop every single thing that they're doing in life just to meet you or just to answer your text or just to take your call what it means is that They'll find some time. They'll find a way to make you feel wanted. They'll find a way to make you feel loved, to make you feel accepted. They'll find a way to just be there. You know how people always say they're so busy and then someone they love and they really care about dies? All of a sudden they can make it to the vigil, they can make it to the burial, or they're very sick, they can make it to the hospital. Because you make time for what's important. What's really urgent to you, you'll make time for. So if you're in a relationship with someone who for some reason cannot find I'm busy, I have a job, my job is too tasking, I, am, I'm, I can barely make it, I'm tired. No, it's you they don't want to see, friend. It's you they can't actually make time for. I've experienced this in a relationship, and I'm in a marriage, I'll tell you. People will make time for what they actually want. So friend, I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but check yourself, if that man or that girl is not making time, it's you. It is you they really don't want to make time for. The second hard truth is that love, as beautiful as it is, as amazing as it is, is not enough to make a relationship. Okay? Remember how they lied to us that the butterflies in your stomach and the gifts and the sweet cute kisses? That is what made a relationship. They lied. In fact, sips tea. Real tea. You lied. There's respect. There's trust. There's commitment in many ways. There's loyalty, there's money, there's sex, there's, oh my God, there's a lot to make a relationship. Now, love is nice, okay? And in fact, if you start with the love to get into a relationship, it's a good thing. But to maintain it, to maintain a relationship, friends, in fact, at some point, like even in marriage, I feel like love, there's a time where love just burnt out. Mm -hmm. There's a time where we felt like we did like this, the flames, and actually burnt it. So love is not enough, okay? Now, it could be a good base to start your relationship. In fact, it is a good base. I would hope you love each other when you're starting a relationship. But to keep it going, to maintain it, to be the 20 years in love and 30 years in love. In fact, what I can say to this based on experience, love will take different forms. It will shape into something completely different. So love at the start might look like the flowers, might look like um, dates, might look like traveling the world together might look like great sex whatever it is but later on love might look like just being there when i need you might look like listening to me you might look like it, it it turns around to many different things so when you start a relationship fantastic start with love but i'm telling you to keep it to maintain the relationship get the other juices the respect the loyalty the commitment the trust build all the other things the other hard truth and this one come close no one person can actually feel the void of loving yourself. It's true. You can't sit there and look at this one person and ask them to be everything. There's an emptiness, I want to feel loved and you should make me feel loved. And I will not feel loved until you do it. You're doing A, B, C, D and because you're doing these things, you're hurting me and I'm not feeling loved. That's your job. <laughs> love yourself like why are you asking this person to fill an emptiness that you yourself could not fill and i know that when we speak about self-love there's a like a bashing we get because you're not supposed to love yourself you're supposed to love each other friend if i love myself then i know how to love you okay so you should not now this one i had to actually learn so bad because for a long time i thought because we're together you might as well feel a void on an emptiness in my life i will love myself to this point then after that, pick up the slack. That's not true. You actually should love yourself 100%, that there's no emptiness. 
then you look attractive to the other person, that they, they want to love you, they want to love this happy person, this person is full of life, okay? But if you're empty, expecting the other person to feel you, expectations, remember how we talked about those, where you sit there and tell the other person, I would be happy if you came home at 5 p.m. every single day. Then one day they start doing that, coming home every day at 5 p.m. and you're like, okay, I know you're here at 5 p.m. every day, but I would like it if you watch the same movie as me as we drank tea. And the person's like, friend, you wanted me to come home on time. I'm here. Now you must also, you know, like it starts becoming, after they feel this thing, you want them to feel the next thing. You should pick up my calls every time I call you. They do that. Okay, but also you should sound nice. Like, you'll always have something they need to feel for you, okay? So no one person is going to fill the void that you should feel for yourself. Friends, love yourself enough. And the next hard truth kind of is similar because this one says you cannot make someone love you. Yeah. So you know that thing where people start a relationship and the guy's like, oh, that chick is hot, let's just stay. Then three months later, they're like, I'm still with the same girl? Okay. Let's just see where this goes. And the other girl, meanwhile, is just trying to make this into a beautiful romantic notebook story, which it isn't. Or sometimes it is the girl who is like, ah, I'm just trying to see where this is going. And the guy, meanwhile, is saying, no, I'd like to meet your parents. I'd like to meet your friends. I'd like to make this serious. I'd like to. The chick is like, we're just joking. We're just playing. Guys, there's nothing you can do to make someone who's not ready to love you in a certain way start to do that. People choose to love you. Did you know that? Yeah. Like, I can be a nice person and walk into a building where there are five people, and out of the five people, three decide to love me or like me, and the other three don't. It's just a choice. It's a choice. You see someone, when you get to know them, you choose to love them. And listen, yes, it helps if you are certain things for someone, but there's not one thing that you can do that's going to make the other person start to love you differently. It's what's going on in their life. It's how they perceive things now. It's, it's how they're forgiving. It's how they're loving. It's them. It's their choice. You could be the best, the sweetest person, do everything, bring all the flowers. I don't know, bring the clouds from the sky and hand them to this person in an envelope. Who cares? If the person doesn't want to love you, friend, there's nothing. Please, in fact, release yourself from the hard work. Please, there's nothing you can do and that's the truth. The next hard truth, and I really hope this one is understood, tears and fighting isn't love. I think what this hard truth is trying to say is that love isn't painful. Actually, it doesn't have to be painful. Now, there's some lessons you learn the hard way in love, okay? That's okay. But then there's the way you have to beat me for me to understand that you care. There's the times where you have to manipulate me emotionally for me to know that you care. There's the ones where you think you can do a wrong thing and then do a nice thing, and that's love, you know? Someone batters you and then buys you a diamond ring the next day and you think that's love. Oh, but, you know, rather cry in a Range Rover than be happy in a little bit. No, friends, actually, no. Mm -mm. There's no point at which love is supposed to include pain, okay? So do not sit there and say, this person loves me, they're so passionate about loving me to a point where they're emotionally manipulating me, they're being toxic, they're being abusive in any way. You're creating your own version, friends, and it's not love. It really isn't. Healthy love has disagreements. You don't agree all the time just because you love each other. Healthy love creates dialogue. Now, when we say it creates dialogue, it doesn't mean that every time something bad happens, like I've seen the evolving of my marriage, we used to be the kind of people who would not be able to sit on a round table and discuss matters because we're passionate. I do something wrong, you do something wrong, everybody ignores each other, it's like a spark. Now, I feel like we've matured. I'll do something wrong, he'll wait it out maybe a few hours, and then he'll call me and say, this is what you did, this is how you hurt me. He's able to now speak up. I'm able to also articulate how I feel, but it's taken time. Now, in the time it took, we disagreed a lot, we were unhappy a lot, but it doesn't mean it was unhealthy, toxic, where you actually abuse each other, manipulate each other. So love will have its qualms where it's ups and downs, but it doesn't hurt. I don't know if that would make sense, you know? It's not abusive, it's not manipulative. So do not decode that as love. It might be hard for some of you, but accept it. So the other truth is that you attract love by making more of it. Get your minds out of the gutter. Not that kind of making love, okay? But that helps. Um, what I mean is, you know how you meet a happy person and they're always vibrant and they're always cute and they're always just nice. You want that energy. 
you feel like telling them, can I be your friend? Can we just vibe? You're giving me a thing. It's nice. Okay? It's like meeting a girl who's always dressed up. She's always just looking, dressed to the nines. Like, do you guys follow Mkwanzi, Tracy Kakuru, on Instagram? This is what she looks like on a random Monday. Eh? Like, you, you just want to be in her presence. Tracy, I, like, girl. Yeah. So people like that, you just want to be around them. And that's just from looking nice. Now imagine if you're the kind of person who's just happy, you're content, you're full of life, you're just bubbly. That's the person you want. If I told you to pick two girls, you'll pick the happy, pretty, every, everything. That was the one. So if you want love in your life, you kind of have to be it. You have to be the person who's loving. If you want forgiveness, you have to be the person who forgives. Not a doormat. But you have to be that person to get that stuff. Okay? You have to prove you kind of can do it to, for you to get it. Okay? You can't question somebody on why they don't love you a certain way when you also don't love yourself a certain way. Okay? So one of the things that I can teach you in this is, um, it's not what you really expect, but there's a time where I couldn't pour in my own cup. Like I was the type of person who would do everything for everybody and burn out and almost die. And I thought that's what it meant to love other people. What I was doing is not loving myself. And I was teaching other people that they could love themselves, but they could uh, not love me. It's okay, because me, I can take it. That's what I was doing. Yeah, because if you're saying, I can give you the last ounce of energy that I have, and I break down and die, and it's okay, as in I'm showing you that, because that's what I'm doing for myself. Why wouldn't you do the same for me? So what happens is that my family would ask of me everything until I had nothing to give, because that's what I was doing. I would give them my time, my resources, my energy, my everything, until there was nothing to give. So they also, in turn, would ask the same exact thing of me. Right now, if I'm tired, I'll tell my husband, I'm going to shut off because I need to sleep. And when I get up, I will help you. So what he also does now, he gives the same thing back to me. When he sees me slightly yawning, stretching, he's like, aren't you tired? You need to rest. Because I've taught him that that's what I do. So you need to teach people that this is what I, this is love, this is what it looks like. So they know what to give you, okay? If you want love, become or do or be more of it to get more of it. And the last hard truth about love is that every relationship is different. And you're probably saying, Flavia, that's not hard. The truth is the truth. We all know it. No, you don't. Oh, you know it, but you don't want it to be true. I remember in my first two years of marriage, which were the hardest for me, I really wanted my friends, my uh, maid of honor, my everybody to rally around me. And you know what I wanted? I wanted them to tell me how they're doing their relationships. Hmm? How are you doing your marriage? So that I can copy and paste. Because you seem happy. You seem to have found the thing that works. You know me. I crying, unhappy, intolerant. Like everything is breaking. What did you guys do? What are you guys doing every day? How are you cooking the meals? In fact, how are you laying the bed? How are you talking to each other? I just want to copy and paste because you seem happy and I don't seem happy. But this is the thing, what they neglected to tell me is that I had to find my own balance, okay? Like no one is going to do that job for you. I had to find my own wobble, I had to fight my way through it. We both scream, shout, and then eventually land, okay? Why? Because every relationship is different. I could tell you how we talk, how we walk, how we go to the gym, whatever, our routine, everything. And even when you copy and paste, it won't work for you. Because one, there's a reason why you both found each other. There's a reason why you found him the one and he found you the one. There's, there's a things that you liked about each other that might not even be the thing. Like, you know how you have, like, I'm an only child, but I'm married to, my husband has three other siblings. So you can imagine what the three siblings like about him isn't what I like about him. So there's reasons why we have gelled. There's a reason why we have found it okay for us to be in a relationship. You know when you find two people and you're like, how are these two, like, what do these two find in each other? Like, how is this a relationship? When it is and they're happy, it's because people are different. So you need to actually sit and see what is your magic. What are the good? What are the bad? For you guys. Now, the things that are generic, where people tell you relationships work through communication, through acceptance, through forgiveness, that's general. But then you have to find how that applies in your relationship. Because how I have to forgive may never be how you ever have to forgive. Okay, there are things I will forgive for that you in your mind you'll be like, ah, you are mad, I'd kill you. And yet there are things in your relationship I'd be like, no, I would be divorced in two days. We're all different. So find peace 
in saying that you know what my thing is my thing i'll find how to do it and that's what it is and i'll love it that way so every relationship is different it sounds easy but if you keep that in mind you'll be good bye